So nearly three years ago, I sat down after work to watch Parks and Rec, one of my all-time favorite shows. I opened Netflix and it was gone. A quick Google search told me Netflix's licensing deal had ended and it had moved over to Binge, yet another $20 a month subscription. This pissed me off. Naturally, my first thought was how do I make sure this never happens again? I had a couple of options. One, pay for all the streaming services to ensure I always have access to everything I like watching. Sure, but financially irresponsible. Or two, buy physical media. Great, I'd own all my own shows, but then I'd need a Blu-ray player and I can't watch on my phone or anywhere that isn't at home. What I really needed was my own streaming service, one I could upload my media to and access from anywhere. It turns out, that's a thing. Two weeks later, I had all the parts to build my own media server. A few hours after that, I had Bragi, the heart of our home entertainment system. For nearly three years, Bragi has served up our media collection flawlessly, but now it's running out of space and it's long overdue for a bit of an upgrade in a couple of tweaks. So in this video, I'm giving Bragi a new home, a proper storage server case. And along the way, I'll talk about why this has been one of the best tech investments I've ever made. A quick note, this isn't a full tutorial on how to do this yourself. There are much better qualified people for that. But if you're considering building your own media server, this might help you decide if it's worth it for you. Bragi runs a bunch of software for me and serves as project storage for work. Hardware-wise, it's built to be cheap and efficient with an Intel i3-12100, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, a 10 gig NIC, and a handful of storage hard drives. Despite the budget build, it's been rock solid. But after I started ripping 4K Blu-rays, the storage filled up pretty fast. I needed more drive bays, which meant a new case. The problem? Most PC rack cases are at least 500 mil deep, exactly the available depth in my rack. That leaves exactly zero millimeters for cables and connections on the back of the server. Not ideal. After a lot of searching, I found Sliger. Sliger? I'm not sure. A company that makes compact rack enclosures, including a 10 bay NAS case that's only 380 mil deep called the CX3701. Catchy name. It supports ITX motherboards, SFX power supplies, and has 10 drive bays. It ticked every box. The only downside was shipping to Australia cost almost as much as the case itself. Before long, I had the case here down under. Now, this isn't gonna be a fancy brand new server build. This ain't no petabyte project. I'm just using this upgrade as a pretext to talk about how good of an investment this server's been for me, and to show a little bit of this case for anyone who might be interested in their own. After shutting down and stripping the original Bragi, I was ready to get cracking. The Sliger case comes apart behind the drive bays to make it easier to install your hardware. In a small enclosure like this, features like that are a godsend. Just a couple of screws and the motherboard tray comes away from the drive bays. I'm gonna put the drive bay section aside for the moment and mount my motherboard, power supply, fans, and 10 gig NIC. I went with some of Noctua's industrial fans. The rack's in my garage, so noise isn't a concern, but heat is. These fans move some serious air, which should help with drive longevity. The case uses an SFX power supply, which means I can't use the old one. I grabbed one of Corsair's 850 watt SFX Platinum rated units to try and keep excess energy consumption down and make sure I have plenty of power for all the drives. No need to mess with the CPU, I left the Noctua NHL9 cooler in place. It worked in the old 2U case and if it ain't broke. Most ITX motherboards only have four SATA ports, but I needed 10. Solution, an NVMe to SATA expansion card. This slots right in to replace the NVMe SSD that I don't need anymore. And it keeps the one PCIe slot free for my network card. Speaking of which, I swapped over the mounting plate on my network card for the full height version and mounted it in the PCIe slot. Now we reinstall the front half of the case and plug in all the drive bays. 
Reattaching the front half of the case to the motherboard tray was not as simple as I'd hoped. The screws didn't quite line back up as I think they're supposed to. I don't know why, but a bit of manhandling and jiggling got it mostly there. On closer inspection, it looks like the outer side panels are a little bit warped. They've sort of bowed outwards. Perhaps they were damaged in manufacturing or shipping? I don't know. The case comes with a SATA power splitter for powering all the drive bays, which is about twice as long as it needs to be. The case doesn't have a proper backplane. Instead, there are SATA pass-through connectors for each drive. Sliger's pass-through system works, but it's not perfect. The connectors can't lock into place and they fall off super easily inside the machine. I even broke one of the pass-through connectors with some light sideways pressure. Not awesome. The fact it comes with two spares suggests Sliger knows about the issue too, which really doesn't fill me with confidence. For the price, I really wish they'd included a simple backplane. They're not that difficult to make these days and it would have made this case a lot more functional. Once everything was connected, I tidied up the cables, closed up the case off camera and installed it back in the rack. Ah, but I feel like I've missed something. Much better. I've had Bragi 2.0 up and running for a week or so, and it's been purring along perfectly. I added a couple more drives off camera to expand the capacity to about 74 terabytes of usable space. I've also added a four terabyte SATA SSD to run Docker containers and store current projects on some faster storage. The Sliger case has improved temperatures across the board. Overall, I'm super happy. It's a solid little case with just a handful of quirks. If you need a shallow NAS case, there aren't really any better options that I've been able to find. There are definitely some compromises with a case this small though. They're not really the case's fault, they're just some of the compromises that come with an ITX based server. It seems pretty well built, if a little rough around the edges, literally. But this video isn't really about the case. If you've watched for this long, you must be beginning to wonder how this is a good investment at all. Surely this is a lot more expensive and complicated than just subscribing to a handful of streaming services. And you're right, kind of. To get ad-free access to the shows and movies I want, I'd have to subscribe to the ad-free tier of more than five separate streaming services. I'd also need either Google Drive or Apple iCloud for data storage. That adds up to about 107 Australian dollars per month or $1,284 a year. Now I'm a numbers driven guy, so in order to justify Bragi to myself, I made some visualizations to help me understand whether this made sense at all. Assuming I built Bragi right the first time, complete with the expensive case you've seen today, it would cost me about $3,600 to build. On average, it consumes about 40 watts of energy, which at current energy prices equates to about $6 a month to run. With this in mind, our break-even point for Bragi lands at about three years. But that's not all. Since 2011, Netflix has increased their prices by 6% per year on average. If we assume all these subscription services will increase at a similar rate, which historically they will, we end up with a break-even point of about 31 months. That means in under three years, I'll be saving hundreds in subscription fees, right? Well, yes, but in reality, it's not quite that simple, which is why this video is titled the best tech investment I've ever made and not the best tech investment you could make. First of all, the cost of Bragi does not take into account a few things. For example, the cost of your media. Unless you're happy to sail the high seas, it quickly adds up. Secondly, this doesn't consider the time spent learning how to do all of this. For me, this is as much a hobby as it is a cost-saving measure, so it was worth it, but the math might be different for you. If you follow a walkthrough on YouTube or elsewhere, I'm confident that most reasonable tech literate people could manage to get their own server set up and working over a long weekend. Lastly, my math doesn't take into account any maintenance required for your server failed parts, replacement drives, etc. I've, I've not run into any failed parts so far, so this hasn't really been a consideration for me, but it's something worth keeping in mind. However, even with all of these extra considerations, the server still makes perfect sense to us. I own copies of all my media, the services can't change their licensing agreements, 
and rug pull my favorite shows. I can enjoy them without ads and I know they won't disappear for the internet or be modified to be suitable for different audiences. What's more is it frees me up from the algorithms used by these services to suggest media they'd like me to watch and lets me make these decisions more independently. Plus, nowadays paying for a streaming service doesn't even necessarily mean you get an ad-free experience. I'm not interested in spending my whole life watching ads. Obviously, you'll need to do your own math, but your server doesn't need to cost you nearly this much. Hardware Haven's done a whole video on building a $150 server. You'll find the link to that in the description down below. It's a great watch. Bragi has been the single best investment in entertainment I've ever made. It's the center of our entertainment library and gives me total control over my media. If you're thinking of doing something similar, run the numbers. It just might make sense for you too. Oh, and for the record, that last season of Parks and Rec, totally not worth the trouble. Damn you, Jerry. It is not my fault. Uh.